Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to CData Arc. In this video, I'll show you how to host your own FTP and SFTP servers using Arc so that external parties can connect and exchange files with you while optionally kicking off advanced workflows in the process. So let's get started. Hosting your own FTP or SFTP server with Arc is accomplished in two steps. The first step takes place in the Profiles page, where you can select the tab for SFTP or FTP depending on which protocol you want to use. I'll use SFTP for the purposes of this video, but the same principles would apply for FTP servers as well. In the SFTP Server tab, I can see the configuration options for my server. The required settings are the port, the server certificate and certificate password, and the root directory. Port 22 is the standard port for SFTP, so I'll just leave that as it is. For the certificate, if you don't already have a digital certificate to secure your server, you can create a new self-signed certificate using the certificate creation tool here. I'll just select a certificate that I created earlier, and then enter its password below. Setting the root directory allows you to lock down what part of the file system your external partners have access to. For the purposes of this video, I just have a simple folder set up on my C drive to use as the root, but you'll likely want to put more thought into the root directory in a production use case. So the required settings are configured at this point, but before moving off the page, it's worth talking about Windows authentication and allowed IP addresses. If you're hosting ARC on Windows, you can enable Windows authentication for the SFTP server. External users would log in with their Windows account rather than anything configured here. When using this, you may want to use the macros available in the root directory setting, which are user and domain, and you can see these macros by hovering over the root directory setting. These allow you to create separate root folders for different users and different domains when Windows authentication is handling the login process. Next, IP addresses. By default, ARC allows inbound connections from all IP addresses, indicated by this star. You can add specific IP addresses and then remove the star to further lock down the network security around the port that ARC server is listening on. Since this video is just a simple example, I'll just allow all inbound IPs. All right, that wraps up the configuration on the Profiles page, and we can save our changes to start the server. Now the server is listening, but unless we activated Windows authentication, we still need to set up credentials for our external users to log in. This is done in the Flows page, using individual SFTP server connectors. I need a different SFTP server connector for each different set of credentials that I want to give access to the server. Conceptually, you can think of each connector belonging to a separate external partner that needs to connect. Within the SFTP server connector, I can set the username and authentication method for my user. I'll just stick with password authentication here and set up a simple test test account. All right, with the user set up, I have a fully functional SFTP server running, so let's hop into an external SFTP client to show the process of connecting to Arc. So here is WinSCP, my personal favorite SFTP client, and I'll establish a connection using the settings that I just configured in Arc. It's running on my local machine, so the host is localhost, the port is 22, and the authentication is that test, test user that I just created. All right, so now I can connect, and then I'll see Arc's welcome message, and now we have access to Arc's SFTP server. You can see here a receive and a send folder, and you'll also notice that we're inside the SFTP server connector that I created in the flow. The send folder is designed for external parties to pick up files that they need to download, while the receive folder is designed for external parties to upload files that you want to process with ARC. For the purposes of this video, let's imagine our external partner has connected to ARC in order to download some files, in which case they would be stored in the send folder. There's nothing in the send folder right now, so let's go generate some files as an example. Back in ARC, I'll head to the Input tab for the SFTP server connector and select the Generate Test Files option. This simulates files arriving at this connector in a more sophisticated workflow, like maybe these files were grabbed from the cloud and decrypted before moved over to this connector. I can also interact with the SYN folder just like any other folder on my hard drive, as long as I remember where I configured the root directory for this server. Okay, let's head back into WinSCP, and we'll dig into the SYN folder now, which contains those test files that we generated. Playing the role of an external trading partner, I can now download these files and effectively receive the data that's meant to be transferred. At this point, the task in ARC is to create more SFTP server connectors for any additional users that we want to create, and then optionally build larger workflows around the files uploaded to and downloaded from this SFTP server connector. And that's it for configuring FTP and SFTP servers in ARC. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can find more resources at arc.cdata.com.